Hey everyone, this is, uh, you know, a thing that we're, we're just going to test out. Jason gave me the idea of uh, hosting or something. Jason, say hi. Hello, I'm Jason. Okay. And my friend Devin. Howdy. And um, we, we just wanted to work on something because at the time of recording, we're all, we're all stuck indoors, let's just say. And so to do something with our time, we thought we have such a wide variety of things that we like as individuals without either our friends have passive knowledge on or no knowledge at all. So we decided to take this time to teach our fandom or our, what's the words I'm looking for? Uh, teach our friends? Yeah, just teach our friends the things that we enjoy and like and that we are knowledgeable about. Yeah. So today is the, I'll be, I'll be the teacher for the day. And our topic is, drum roll please. Godzilla. These guys know that I'm a huge nut when it comes to the Godzilla series. Absolute I, nut. Like ridiculously yeah. knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He ain't I an believe... acorn, he's a walnut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I'm a huge fan. Like I have my phone on silent. I'm gonna make sure it's on silent because when it's, when anyone texts me, it's literally Godzilla roaring in my face for like a good solid three minutes. Uh, I've also, I believe I've, to give my credentials, I've uh, watched almost all the movies. I think there's a few that I either I watched as a kid and have a foggy memory of, or I tried watching and I fell asleep. But like, I've seen almost all the movies and I've written actually a paper or two about Godzilla. I'm not saying it's a great paper, but I wrote a paper about it, so I had to do research. He had to look up things. Yeah. yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> no, I did more than Wikipedia, you motherfucker. Wikipedia I, I went... <laughs> warrior. Wiki... No, no, I... No. How dare you? I do Ooh, not read... You got I some not Encyclopedia read... Britannica in there, too? <laughs> yeah. My... <laughs> <laughs> World no, but Series I got... Like... Oh... Yeah, no, but I do, I did like, I did, I looked for like original sources. So like if I talked about the original movie, I went out and bought the movie and watched it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. which now I think because I got the Criteria collection, which is has the, as you will learn, the Showa era of Godzilla films. I have two, three copies of the original movie. I have the American version. I have the Japanese version, and I have a, a copy, another a double copy of the Japanese version. Ooh. And I think that kind of leads into let's give a basic history of the Godzilla franchise. Let's just start from the beginning. And at any time, uh, students, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, raise your hand or just you know, bar, uh, you know, just start speak up. And if you have any questions, so Godzilla's origins actually go towards a short paperback novel interesting that was i think like i don't know where they were sold like it might have been sold in magazines or like the equivalent of like when you see magazines at the as you're checking out yeah. but like the 1950s version of japan market where they had uh like small paperback books so and it go ahead talking about like uh um comic strips kind of and like no a like a chapter book. or okay like a, a book. more of a traditional book Interesting. Okay. it's definitely unique a unique form of media yeah and or even i think even in that story it was um vague on what godzilla was it was just it was like a beast and then the uh, vaguely described beast um and it took the people making the movie to be like okay well let's go with uh, like a reptilian like creature and oh hmm. i don't want to get too deep into it because it's a bunch of a rabbit hole talking about the what godzilla represents but it the movie the first movie very shows off the feeling encapsulating the feeling and the mood of nuclear war like post bombed japan yes even to the point where like even when making the godzilla suit they're like oh we wanted to look like you know the callus scars you got from radiation burns and nuclear burns and stuff like that yeah they really uh, they wanted it to be like a, a metaphor for the the effects of nuclear warfare right yeah 
and he was he, he even was a little topical too because even at the time when Godzilla the first Godzilla was released was sorry oh I should have my notes in front of me uh, it was released 1954 in Japan and that was roughly exact yeah no it was exactly 10 years after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki yeah I believe Nagasaki. Uh, the bombings that went down there. So it was very fresh in um, you know, actually cultural very, zeitgeist. That is pretty recent in in history comparatively. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was and not to get bogged down to it, it was very a it was not campy. I'll just say that it was very dark, it was very grim. But they end up killing Godzilla somehow in the movie. They use a weapon to kill Godzilla. They 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 kill him, he's dead, like stripped to the bone, but there's a sequel movie where somehow he comes back, and this is the and it, this movie was released a year later in 1955. Well, they really turned that one out. <laughs> yeah, like within a year, because it took wow. it took a long time for production because at the time there was no such thing as like kaiju or like men in suits. That literally was something they came up on this roughly on the spot. Wow. Like, how are you going to represent this? Well. Let's, you know, build this costume-like thing. And there's, you can look up, I don't want to get bogged down too much into it, but you can look up the horror stories of like, oh, they used rubber cement, but then when they tried moving around, the costume is too rigid and too heavy. So the people in the costumes pass the fuck out from like heat exhaustion. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. They need yeah. a ventilation system built in. <laughs> yeah. Where's the but, mouth hole? Well, the Technically, there is, there is no mouth hole, but they did have like holes in the neck, so you can see out of. And they even uh, in some of the magazines they even covered that up by saying, "Oh, that's not that's not holes for the costume. That's Godzilla's gills. That's <laughs> what it is. Because Godzilla can breathe underwater." There you go. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, Godzilla raids again. First time there's another kaiju and stuff like that. Still black and white. But after that, like Godzilla is frozen in a glacier. Seven years, I think roughly seven years later, in 1962, we get King Kong versus Godzilla. And this is the one that kind of set the precedence for what Godzilla would be for the Showa era, which is Showa era is between 54 and 75 for Godzilla. Why is it called the Showa era? Is that just the time frame they named, or is that well like in the in, in Japan they have um, like say I forget the the length of time, but certain periods will be have a certain name. Oh oh the, yeah 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 yeah. We're in something like that now, right? It just changed recently. Yeah, it yeah. just actually it we just ended the Heisei. Yeah, I want to say Heisei. I don't think that's the right name. But, like, we're in a new era. Yeah. Um, and I believe it's called, like, we just recently got out of the Heisei era, which was from the 80s to 2018 or 2019. I think it was 19, but... Yeah. So what do these what do these eras represent? Are they just, like, times of culture? Or are they just times... Times of-, of culture, but it's also an easy way to break down the differences between how Godzilla is portrayed. Because in the Showa era, so... That's when we start getting King, like, Mothra. That's when we get King Ghidorah. That's where we start getting the more goofier, like, Terra bad movies of yeah. the Godzilla era. Where, you know, Godzilla's trying to raise a kid that he found. So it's Son of Godzilla or Godzilla versus <laughs> Eberron. Starts getting uh, a lot more campy. Yeah, because they realize that, wow, kids really enjoy Godzilla. We should sell to kids. Yeah. And that's when even, um, but it's interesting because at 1968, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters came out. And that was supposed to be, you know, cap it. Like, after this movie, there's no more Godzilla movies going to be ever made. Or they weren't going to be focused on making any more Godzilla films. And so this was the first time that we had a quote-unquote monster bash. Where it's like every kaiju that Toho Studios, the people who gave birth to Godzilla they you know made a bunch of other kaiju films and so basically Destroy All Monsters is where like let's bring every monster we have in the studio into this one movie just make it just go crazy it was the yeah, they crossover went, went in a lifetime crazy. before Avengers yeah, yeah it was basically was the <laughs> kaiju Avengers of its time but it made 
they made really good money. So they're like, oh, we got to make more movies, though. <laughs> and that's when we start getting into Godzilla vs. Hedra, Gigan, Megalon. Uh, May, yeah, Megalon. And those movies are like the chain of movies of like, <laughs> like bad movies where they're they were being experimental, especially with Godzilla vs. Hedra. They were being very experimental with the um, environmental message and the way they were portraying stuff. Yeah. It was uh, it was very odd and I don't think stands the testament of time. But then some people agree that the uh, Godzilla starts picking up in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Because that's when we get first introduced to another staple monster, Mechagodzilla. Basically, aliens make a robot version of Godzilla, and it's armed to the teeth. It even uh, makes Godzilla look bad, because when we first introduced to it, it just looks like another Godzilla. But it's, like, really beating up monsters to the point where, like, it grabs an Anguirus yeah. and, like, rips its jaw. That's insane. That's brutal. And, and it's brutal, too, because they even have, like, like, you know, Kool-Aid blood squirting out of the mouth and stuff <laughs> like that, where it's like, Jesus, this is for, meant for kids, right? <laughs> Were they still marketing uh, towards kids at this time? Yo, totally. It, they didn't stop marketing to kids. Wow. But, you know, maybe that's more of a cultural difference. We want um, blood. <laughs> yeah. Kids are like, I need blood. I, mean, I, I, I suppose that is why Mortal Kombat was so popular. Yeah. <laughs> but the Showa era ended with a uh, Terra of Mechagodzilla. So after Mechagodzilla, the next year, so Mechagodzilla came out in 74. Terror of Mechagodzilla came out in 75. So are you saying Terror of Mechagodzilla? Terror of Mechagodzilla. Sorry, I'm probably not enunciating. I'm saying it too fast. Terra? Terror. Oh, Terror. T- okay. Yeah. Grr, oh, terror. Nice. It ended with Terror of Mechagodzilla when we have a one-shot kaiju that, you know, never shows up in anything else. But after that, they retired the character for, like, a, a long time. Godzilla was still kicking around. They used some of his stock footage in Bye Bye Jupiter, which is some Toho sci-fi movie. Oh, and then uh, Hannah, I think maybe Hanna-Barbera? I don't think it's Hanna-Barbera. Yeah, Hanna-Barbera picked up uh, in the States a Godzilla cartoon series that ran for a year. Really? Yeah, it's goofy as fuck. Is it just, is it just terrible? It's, you know, it's 70s Hanna-Barbera, so it's goofy, like Godzilla. It's there's a, there's a, Godzilla. <laughs> a little bit, there it, they have, even though they, there's like a gang of kids, there's a gang of, not kids, but there's a gang of uh, adults with like one kid who has a friend with baby Godzilla who is the Scooby-Doo equivalent. And he has like, he flies with webbing between his arms and sides. It's, oh. it's just nonsense. <laughs> but in 1984, the Toho return, Godzilla returned to the theaters in Return of Godzilla. I believe it was called in the States, and I think maybe in Japan it was just called Godzilla 1984. They basically rebooted it, but it was not reboot as in this is beginning of the new, a new, like it's a beginning of a new series, but it's a more of a sequel, uh, but it's also a sequel to the original Godzilla King of Monsters. So this is a new timeline. New, yeah, think of it as just a new timeline. And with this timeline comes what I believe is the best run of Godzilla movies. Um, and this is the Heisei era. So between the 80s, um, where did I just say? 84 all the way to 95. Surprisingly, not too many new monsters, uh, but a lot of returning favorites. But the first one's like Godzilla vs. Biolanti. King Ghidorah comes back. Mothra comes back. We get uh, another Mecha Godzilla. But the f- last two movies, which are my personal favorites of all time, are Space Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroya. And Destroya. Destroya! Not Destroyer. They couldn't copyright Destroyer. They could copyright Destroya. <laughs> and in yeah, right. and in that, Godzilla dies. So the, again, another finale to the series. They uh Godzilla's really like, like killing Godzilla, man. That's their money. Yeah. I mean, ugh, wait, you it the confusion hasn't even started when it comes to how many times Godzilla dies. But yeah, he dies, and I think that by that point, he the movie is released in 95. And at this point, only the last movie that actually be shown in American theaters was Godzilla Return of Godzilla. And I think by Alanti, 
But we after that, after 91, we didn't get any more Godzilla movies until they came out. Until that American one, right? Well, no, until like 10, I want to say 10 to 15. It was a long time before they even came out to VHS or DVD. Why did so they there's this, stop sending Godzilla movies over here? There's uh, no concise evidence that I could find or I, I saw saying why they just stopped. They just stopped. Just um, but <laughs> 98 is when we get Sony's slash TriStar's lackluster Godzilla, where Godzilla attacks New York. And now, my getting my own personal history of Godzilla, um, this is the one that I watched the most because this is what I had. Yeah, in hindsight, it's not that good. Uh, it's it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be called Godzilla in my eyes. It should just be called something else. A monster attacks New York because it's it does not have the same it does not have the same spirit as Godzilla. Isn't it is a funny. T-Rex-esque monster? No, no, no. It's uh, the French were testing out nuclear bombs and they it was a mutated iguana. <laughs> So a mutated iguana, which is funny because in the later and the 2000s or the millennia era of Godzilla, they they retconned the the Godzilla that attacked New York and just labeled it as Zilla. So yeah, canonically, it is called Zilla now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, because that movie was so bad, or at least bad in the eyes of Toho, some people believe that two years no, one year later they made Toho made another Godzilla movie. Oh man. So within a year, they filmed another movie, and it's called Godzilla 2000 Millennium, or Godzilla 2000. That's crazy. Yeah. Just and a movie in a year. Yeah, because, I mean, I find that interesting, because, like, you're just so perturbed, like, they fucked with our series so bad, we'll make our own! And that's kind of gave the return of Godzilla within the two in the early 2000s. Yeah, they're like, uh, we need to show America how a real Godzilla movie is made. Yeah, and that's what Godzilla <laughs> 2000 is. But between uh, 99, well, it came out in Japan in 99, but America, we actually got it in the year 2000. So it came out, it's, you know, titled year. But between 99 and 2004 was the millennia reign of Godzilla films, which are in good, high production, but not crazy. They're, they're not, I mean, I wouldn't rewatch them all. I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't rewatch them because sometimes the story could be a little dry and a little weird. Now in this age of Godzilla's, each time they come out with a new movie, so like Godzilla vs. Megiris, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, all out in attack. Uh, and then Godzilla vs. Mecha that was Godzilla. one movie you just said? Yeah, that was one movie. Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, all out of attack. That is the full title. That's a hell of a title, man. Yeah, that's a mouthful. All these different movies, as when they released, they're saying, oh no, it's not a sequel to the last movie that came out, I mean, you know, a year or two ago. This is a direct sequel to the 54 movie. The original? Yeah. What? They just, uh, every time they came out with a new movie, it's like, no, this is a sequel. No, oh, this is a sequel to the original. Why? Um, <laughs> the only one to not do that is Godzilla to- uh, Tokyo SOS because the la- the year before, Godzilla Godzilla against Mega Godzilla. So not Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla. It's Godzilla against Mega Godzilla. That was so popular with people that they made a direct sequel to that movie. Interesting. But in 2004, they wanted to celebrate 50 years of Godzilla. Okay. At that time, he's been around for 30 years. And so they did Godzilla Final Wars, which was a hearkening back to uh, God- uh, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, where every kaiju within the Godzilla series made an appearance. Oh my god. And, you know, it had a... And it's 50, what, 50 years or 30 years of Godzilla? Yeah, well, I believe there's roughly, like, at this time, 30, 29 odd movies. Jeez Louise. So, uh, like, every monster, or you different monster from those movies, because they repeated a couple times, uh, showed up in Godzilla Final Wars. And I will say this is one of the, the ones I will always rewatch because not only do you have kaiju fighting, but you have kung fu fighting. And normally the B plot in Godzilla movies are the boring ones where it's like, the humans need to figure out, you know, how to not pollute or, you know, how to stop being bad people. But this yeah. one's like, no, they're they're aliens doing kung fu. That's crazy. Um, and then after that, there was like a long break until the next 10 years when we got Godzilla 2014. And that's when I believe legendary films took over the mantle of Godzilla. And the and 2014 one was not 
received very well critically, correct? I I think a lot of people believed it was. I, I'm trying to remember because I mean it's, that's when it's I wrote fairly my paper. Mediocre, right? Like you didn't. Yeah, see I Godzilla heard it was mediocre until the, the end of the movie. Yeah, there also was a really bad blue ball moment in that movie where like it's the first time we see get like a we get a full pan of Godzilla for the very first time, and then it's a hard cut to like some other bullshit scene where like the the characters in that scene are watching the news of Godzilla destroying like the air Hawaii airport in that movie. Yeah. But like as an audience, we don't get to see that, but the characters get to see it. And we're just like, ah, fuck you. Like, and then that kind of did another resurgence of Godzilla movies. And that's where we get Shin Godzilla, a couple, and then Godzilla King of the Monsters was the last one to come out. Yeah. Um, and that's, and I believe that's the only one, Jason, you've seen. That is the only one I've seen. <laughs> I have seen bits and pieces, like very small little tidbits and pieces, I think of every movie. But the only one I've like sat down and watched is the King of Monsters. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do know of Shin Godzilla. He's like a creepy zombie Godzilla that's red. And white. No, again, that's so the creator of Evangelion was tasked to do uh, Godzilla, and yeah. he he did a very good modern interpretation of the movie. At least I'll say he did a really good inter modern interpretation of the movie. Mm -hmm because it's very bogged down by bureaucracy but like that is the point of the movie is to show off like this bullshit bureaucracy yeah and as of right now the only movie next movie to be slated is godzilla versus kong 2020. oh it is supposed but, to be uh, this movie. yeah hopefully <laughs> fingers, <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> And that is the history section of, you know, the Godzilla stuff that I have. Uh, I know I rambled on a lot, and but do you guys have any questions or anything to inter interject? Um, it all seems pretty pretty straightforward so far for me. I mean, I've I've looked into yeah. the history of Godzilla, so I've seen a lot of the stuff. You're yeah, I also about. believe I forced you because uh, Angry Video Game Nerd Cinemasker Godzilla font. Yeah. I was like, here's a video that has like all of them back to back. We we'll spent two hours watching it. I did, and it was actually very informative and very interesting. Yeah. And, and Devin, uh, get what ex I feel like because you guys have been friends with me for a while, so I'm I'm assuming Devin, you you've seen at least two Godzilla films, right? Yeah, I've uh, seen. Um, I don't remember the names honestly, but you showed <laughs> me a couple of them. Um, I uh, I've watched one of the recent ones that was uh, aired in America. Um, in mm -hmm. theaters, I watched it in theaters. Um, I forgot which one that was, though. Um, was it the King I, of Monsters? I believe so. I'm pretty sure it was King of Monsters. For sure, for sure. If you guys don't have any further questions, I mean, I'll move on to the next thing I have slated, which is uh, Guess I, the Kaiju. Is the the best way I can think of, think of calling it? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a the Kaiju's name and you know power set. And then okay. you can eat, and I maybe for you, you can draw it for yourself, but I want you to explain what this kaiju looks like. And then I will show you an actual image and I'll even put an image in the video of okay. what this monster uh, or kaiju is. So you guys got, Jason, do you actually have a pay, pen and paper this time? I don't actually have a pen and paper this time. Yeah. No, it's this, fine. Jason, Microsoft Paint works. <laughs> no, oh my God. Uh, Devin, are you, are you ready? It'll be good. Yeah, sure. Yep. Okay. So, first monster is... Mm, oh. Also, I'm a horrible reader, so I'm going to bastardize these names. Mugera. M-O-G-U-E-R-A. And also, no Google searching. That's cheating. It's well, yeah. And I'll go on your permanent record. I was going to say that. Hey, don't steal my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a giant, cow. It's a giant cow. Yeah, it's yep. a giant cow. Mugera? <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you some of the... I'll just read the abilities. It okay. has a plasma laser cannon, automatic tracking laser cannon, okay, so it's crushing a, it's, drill, it's a robot. plasma master cannon, synthetic blue diamond coating armor, oh the e MECM, a complex sensory system. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> what is this thing? It has a complex sensory system, okay? Oh and okay. it has it also has all weapons, uh flight and um separation and recombining abilities. Oh my god. So okay. I'll give you guys either what? a minute or two to can gather we... your thoughts to figure oh. out what the oh hell my, this thing can is. We get, like, can we... Get some kind of, you know, <laughs> description of like a shape, maybe? I did give you a synthetic blue diamond coating armor. 
Oh, no. How do you spell its name? No Google searching. No, I just need to know how to spell its name. Muguria. So M-O-G-U-E-R-A. M-O-G-U-E-R-A. What the heck? Mogera? Mogera? Mogera. I think it might be Mogera. Mogera? Maybe Mogera? Mogera? I don't know. Mogera. Mogera. Okay, so, oh my god, dude. What the hell? <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll, if you're still thinking, Jason, or Devin, are you still thinking? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I have no clue. I mean, my mind is going wild with possibilities. <laughs> I'll be this. I'll, let, I'll, I'll give you this. It is a robot. I... I got that much. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I see. I've already given you two hints. I know. That glue so... diamond plasma cannon armor, and, mm. and it's a lizard. I think you said no. You didn't say it was a lizard. You said it was. I said it was a robot. A robot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Goodness. I'm gonna start drawing. I guess. <laughs> Devin, what about you? What uh, what mental image so, are you getting? Um. I'll just uh say I ha- am. Imagining a giant beetle with, uh, you know, it's a mechanized beetle with a huge cannon on its back with mm. smaller cannons um, <laughs> placed around it. I mean, it that does or... sound very like a Japanese robot, with, like a yeah. shit ton of cannons. Yeah, just cannons everywhere. Like it's bo- like a body section of it, like its thorax was like just all cannons maybe or something. Sure, <laughs> why not? Okay, and I'm obviously blue yeah, time. I'm, I'm definitely on the same color scheme. <laughs> All right. Well, Jason, do, uh, do you feel like your description matches his, or what? What, do you, um, what, what mental image are you having? I didn't go beetle, and I didn't go full cannon. I've, I've got Mecha Godzilla <laughs> that's blue with drill arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, All there's right. a drill on the ass end of it. <laughs> on the ass well, end of it. For your yeah. so I'm going to show like you a now. Wasp looking but thing, drill. Maybe. Oh, and it can fly because so it has. This wings. is what it looks like. What the? Oh heck? no! Oh, oh, whoa! I was kind of close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were kind of close, wow. And the uh, cool thing about it is that this is actually two machines in one. I think I can share screens too, right? Yeah. Uh, can you guys see it? Was that the wrong one? <laughs> hey, <laughs> that that's where are the legs? Where are the legs? <laughs> For those who uh, cannot see this, he literally drew a lizard with like noodle drill arms and no feet. Well, I was going to get to the feet eventually, but we sort of showed him. The wobble, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he right. wobbles around. Um, because of time, I want to get to the next crazy uh, monster. Okay, that okay. Thing Stop sharing my screen. That's kind of the idea I had, though, right? Yeah, you're pretty close. Yeah. Let's see. I wish I had a thing to just roll or randomly pick which one. Okay, here we go. Now, this mo- monster, this kaiju here, isn't necessarily from a Godzilla film, but is from the Gamera series. Which is in the Godzilla series. Well, they're they're separate. The universe, they're separate right? studios. Okay. Uh, Gamera, it's it's completely its own thing. Oh. Um, he's it's a, a turtle, turtle, right? Yeah. He's a turtle with uh, it, well, sometimes alien, sometimes Atlantean kaiju turtle that has rockets. <laughs> see, see the turtle. That's how he flies. Yeah, there you go. On his shell, he holds the earth. Oh my god. That's him. His thoughts right, are so... slow, but always kind. This monster is not Baragon, <laughs> but Barugon. B A R U G O N. Barugon. 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 Okay. Okay. I, I have ideas. I'll describe. I'll just and I'll give you his ability set. He has an extendable tongue. <laughs> he has chilling liquid that he could spray. Okay. He's intelligent, and he also has a rainbow death ray. Rainbow death ray. Okay. What? Start your pick up. You know, start your drawings. Oh man. Goodness. I'm just going. Oh my god. What? <laughs> he's he's got rainbow death ray. Yes, and uh, the be more descriptive. It comes from his back. Oh. So okay. from his back, he does a giant arched rainbow of death ray. Oh, so it's not a. Color of the it's a colored rainbow, but it's also a bow, as no, in no, it's a literal not like, rainbow. It's literally a rainbow, a literal rainbow. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it can do. It can, it has a literal rainbow coming from its back. Do any of you guys have like a a mental image of what it is that I'm you want to talk about? I, I'm, I'm picturing something. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> picturing a turtle. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> that has a rainbow gun on its back. <laughs> Devin? So I got a bear, but it's about <laughs> the same. It's a bear. Uh, it's, yes. You know, a giant cannon thing on the back, and then it's uh, got the his tongue just kind of can shoot out of its mouth. And, oh, yeah, I forgot about the tongue. Yeah, and um, sure. <laughs> well, because he also has, remember, he has icy breath. Yeah, and he, he can shoot ice out of his breath, out of his mouth, too, sure. Well, this is what he looks like. Okay. What the heck? <laughs> he is a chameleon ass motherfucker. Oh, that, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was as awesome. much sense as it possibly can. I got the bipedalness correct, I guess. It's about as close as I got. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funky monster. Yeah. What did he There's- appear? What, oh, what? he appeared in Gamera, Gamera versus Baragon. Oh, okay. And it's from it's it, its species is a giant ancient reptile. Oh. Cool. Uh, and it came it's from the scientific name Rainbow. on that. <laughs> yeah. Can we get the Latin name on that one? <laughs> <laughs> Gigantic Aegicus, uh, sis, 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 sis. You know, reptiles do the Sound. tongue thing. Sounds, uh, sis, 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 sounds sis, sis, legit. Uh, Okay, what's the next one I should pick? Uh, I'll, I'll do this one. This kaiju's only made one appearance. Okay. It is called Gabara. Gabara. Not Gamera, but Gabara. Not Gamera, Gabara. Yo, Gabara. G-A-B-A-R-A. <laughs> oh, man. Again, G-A-B-A-R-A. G-A-B-A-R-A. And his abilities are el- electric current, okay. hammer punch, Venom. <laughs> Venom. Smoke breath. Detachable claws. Human engulfment. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he. That's not a fucking ability. He can eat people. <laughs> I think any of these kaijus can yeah. eat somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Because I'm using Wikizilla the, as a reference, and it says what abilities? Human engulfment. I'm like, I think Godzilla could do that if he really wanted to. <laughs> right? But I think the reason why they made a point of saying it is because it says, like, oh, when this guy made an appearance on the Godzilla show, he trapped a human in him. So he didn't eat him, he just was hold- withholding the child within his body. Yeah, that makes Am a lot more sense. Yeah, that's a little specialized. <laughs> but, like, the gift, though, is just him swallowing a fucking kid. <laughs> Oh, going down a saran true. wrapped fucking tube. My God. With the kid kicking and screaming. I'm like, what? That's not special. <laughs> Alright, what what mental image are you guys getting? <laughs> I don't know, man. We've got like um, oh my God, I've got like a hippo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've got like a, a hippo with electricity hands. Mm-hmm. You said detachable claws? No, he's a bug then. He's gotta be a bug. He's a bug with claws that is He's green with blue highlights. He looks like a mantis, but also a beetle. <laughs> and has detachable claws and can saran wrap kids in his stomach. <laughs> Devin, what um, imagery did you get? Well, uh, not not much. I just, <laughs> I just, uh, my guesses are your guesses as good as mine. <laughs> Jason? Okay. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, I've lost. Well, here's what he looks like. What the? <laughs> okay. It's an uglier version of Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a cat face motherfucker. Uh, yeah, he does have a cat face. <laughs> Funny thing about this, like, weird thing about this guy is he technically never existed. Oh. What? In the sense of Godzilla, because in his there movie, are time was... paradox. No, 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 no. So again, when I was saying the age of bad Godzilla films, again, this is Showa era. Mm. It he is basically he bullies baby Godzilla or Manila. Oh man! As you can see here, he's bullying Manila by electrocuting him. Oh my god! Giving a full Nelson. <laughs> Look at that poor kid. Yeah. Oh, he's like killing him, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, and it's uh, if you ever get the chance, you have got to watch the English dub because in that one, Manila talks like this. Even though he's supposed to be like a kid. Goes a child. Yeah, into that's... his stomach. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> what is this? I told you, he saran wraps them. Oh my god, that was yeah. horrendous. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty out there. This monster only exists in a child's mind, 
because he's playing the child's playing pretend like i wish i could hang out with manila on monster island what would that be a fade like a wayne's world kids on monster island palling it up with uh godzilla and baby godzilla <laughs> Baby Godzilla is such a funny concept to me. Yeah. It's yeah. so silly. <laughs> okay, how much? Also, oh my god. Gabara, what was the name? Yep. Gabara, he, he, he's not real. Well, I mean, technically, yeah, he's, he's not real. He's an imaginary friend. He's as real as Blue from Foster's Home. Yep, and that's pretty real in my book. I'll see if we can do uh, one more. One more. What's the good one? I would like to pick up. I got a bunch of of Godzilla. (laughs) I'll do as much as I would love to do Destroya. I will do Guy Gan. I know Guy Gan. I don't remember. Uh, Okay, no Guy Gan then. (laughs) Destroya. (laughs) Okay, so Guy Gan, G A G A N, Guy Gan. Okay. His abilities are anti gravity flight, hooked appendages, and Uh. bloody chainsaws. Oh. Buzzsaw. Laser, blade slicer. He has a tail. Uh, teleportation. <laughs> That's an ability. He has a tail. <laughs> yeah. Also, teleportation, flamethrower, regeneration, and missiles. So he's a robot. One could say. <laughs> um, and I'll I'll let you know this. Uh, he's bipedal because some of these kaiju's are sometimes on all fours, as you see yeah. in the previous ones. Yeah. He's uh. Okay. Isn't this the one with like a like a blade circle in his chest? I can't tell you. What uh, what is going through you guys' mind? Can you I've, give me the skinny? I've got a bipedal Hercules beetle with drill hands and a blade in his chest. That's like a chainsaw. I I I'm imagining a robot with just blades everywhere. <laughs> just, just every part of him is a blade. Edge Lord um, McGee. Yeah, and he looks like a shredder or whatever from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. It's like Oh man. If the shredder was a kaiju. Yes. Exactly. Tonight I died on turtle soup. Mm. Oh that'd be hilarious because then his, his enemy would be uh Gamera. Yeah. That'd be perfect. I'll give you a little bit more time to draw. I think I've got my idea settled. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I will show you. So, there's two versions of this, but both have the same power set. Um, there is a the Showa era, where he made a once or twice appearance. This is what he looks like. Whoa. Oh, I've, I've seen, seen him before, before, actually. Yeah. He's like but this wizard. is what he looks like in the new millennia. Or the hey, I wasn't... That's so much cooler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And modified version is where they replace the claw hands with chainsaw hands. Oh my god. Oh, yes. Yeah. But funniest part about this guy is uh, he's dumb as bricks because they failed to mention it here, but he has circular nipple saw blades that he shoots. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what? So, from where his pectorals would be, like right here, he shoots circular, like these circular saw blades. Okay. And, he, and in Godzilla Final Wars, he kills Mothra that way. But mm. he forgot that they are boomerangs. So he kills Mothra, it hits oh Mothra, God. kills it, turns around, does a cool pose, and then when they come back, they cut off his own head. He just kills himself? He, ki- he decapitated <laughs> himself. That's so he needed a the camera that wasn't there. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Talk about a disappointing. That's, I would be so upset yeah, yeah. if the guy can <laughs> with my favorite kaiju. Yeah. And that's how he freaking dies in King of in yeah. Attack of All Monsters. Final Wars. Final <sighs> Wars. Sorry, that one. I'd be so. I'm sign you some new more homework, man. So yeah, and uh, honorable mentions: Hedra, the Smog Monster. Ew, who is a tadpole? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Uh, Megalon, a beetle Ooh. that shoots bombs like bombs from its mouth, like the kind you have a fuse with. Jiger, oh. another Gamera monster that has uh, impregnated Gamera with a parasite baby. Oh. Parasite baby. Uh-huh. Uh, Space Godzilla, the coolest looking form of Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Flying form in combat. What the? Yeah. What well, the? Because he's from space and he uses crystals that like anti-gravity flying, man. Come on. Crystal form, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. Crystal. Destroya. Destroya! Who looks Destroya. like a fucking demon. 
He looks like a Monster Hunter monster, honestly. <laughs> I'm, getting, like, yeah. I'm getting some hard Doom boss vibes. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wait, he's got a ton of forms. You got to show us his forms, man. Oh, micro yeah. form. What? Crawler form. Juvenile form. A bigger form of it. And then flying form. Yeah, look at him go. <laughs> well, because the idea is that Destroya isn't one monster that keeps changing. It's a collective of smaller monsters. Oh, that makes sense. So it's like, it's a... As much sense as Monster Koji fights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's Legion from Gamera. Hmm. Um, and then Iris from Legion. I mean, sorry, Iris from the Gamera series, which I, sadly, I have not seen the movies where, because Gamera had a reboot too in the 90s. And people who love kaiju movies say these are the best kaiju movies of all time. Really? Yeah, but I haven't been able to get my hands on them legitimately. Um, also, Mothra had uh, a reboot in the sense of she had her own movie series. Yeah. So here's this amphibious flying kaiju. Daghara? Daghara, mm. yeah. It had, like, it poisoned the world's water. Oh, I don't forget how you say this one. Ogre. Orga. Orga was from Godzilla 2000, and um, it uh, tried eating Godzilla, so it just unhinged its jaw. Oh my goodness. Oh my yeah. god. And then we have Mega Gyrus. Mega Gyrus? Mega Gyrus, which is a giant fucking dragonfly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The subtitle, Super Dragonfly. <laughs> Oop, oh, God, yeah, yeah, Super Dragonfly. Now so, for, what, go right ahead. I had a question. Um, what's the name, what's Godzilla's name in Japan? Is it just Godzilla or is it... Gojira. Gojira? Gojira, Gojira yeah. yeah. But oh. I think, like, now that Godzilla's kind of popular around the world, mm -hmm. you say Godzilla, they'll know what you're talking about. None yeah, okay. Be, yeah. Unless they're, like really don't like foreigners or something like Americans. that. They'll be like, oh, God, we you have no silly Godzilla. gaijin. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you silly gaijin. Get the fuck out of my shop. The last segment that I have for you guys, or at least the last part of my lesson today, is I want to talk about something topical. What's new in the world of Godzilla? And the newest thing in the world of Godzilla is the remake of Godzilla versus King Kong. There's a remake? Yeah, there's going to be a remake that's coming out this year. Oh, oh it's a remake? I thought it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well yeah, because they did. I know they did one, but I didn't. Yeah. Is it? It's not a new film with the same title. I thought it was just a new film with the same title. Oh. Because isn't it coming off of Kong Skull Island? I thought that's a yes. Kong Skull. Yes. So they're using King Kong from Skull Island, mm -hmm. and that one's gonna fight the Godzilla from King of All Monsters. Okay. okay. The same one that took down Gigan. So I think this is gonna be very. My hot take. Uh, Could be very one sided. <laughs> I feel like in the like if you did like a death battle situation with them, Godzilla would win. Yeah, isn't but Godzilla the, way bigger than? Yeah, or, the size no, 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 difference no. is it crazy. If you based it off of the American King Kong, like you know, King Kong, the eighth wonder of the world, mm. but King Kong versus Godzilla, that Kong is actually like a tall as a building, like he is a skyscraper. Oh, they just made him bigger. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Like yeah. it. It's the Kong from Skull Island, though. That is a small yeah. gorilla in comparison yeah. to... Yes, but the so the theory about that is that movie setting, the time, the year that it's set, is post-Vietnam. Okay. Uh, but Godzilla versus... In the first movie, it's going to take place in modern day. Because they said it in oh. Skull Island that, like, hey, this... Kong was a juvenile, like he was a kid. So if anything, he was like, you know, in his oh, late they did? teens. Yeah, so that's the theory that Kong in Skull Island was in his late teens. So he's and now he's high. had, you know, 50 plus years to get big and okay. grow some more. Oh, interesting. Okay. So he's going to be like the same height, which I think is going to be goofy as fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's going to look a very big gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'd love to, because I think I've seen some from some of the promotional art. Let me share my screen so you can see, I see what I'm seeing. Some, some of the promotional art, King Kong gets a beard. <laughs> what? Yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. But like... Oh, come on, give me some promotional art. Ugh. I think in some of the promotional shots, he has a bit of like a white man beard going on. That's hilarious. Oh, wow. So because he, that movie's no... coming out, yeah, because that movie's coming out, I decided to go back through my criteria collection and watch the original Godzilla, Godzilla versus King Kong. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh boy, was it a... <laughs> it was a stinker. Oof. So I actually looked into it. I did some background on the movie 
there's a bunch of stuff that also went down on set that I will mention during my synopsis. But the version that I saw was the American version. Mm-hmm. So and what I mean by American version, I mean American edited version. Okay. It was re-edited for American audience. And apparently American audience are dumb fucks and need everything explained because they added a lot of scenes of the UN or emergency report that basically goes over things twice. Okay. And the reason why that happened was there is a problem with licensing because Kong throughout the history only recently have they figured out, you know, copyright issues. Yeah. But for the, its whole history, it's like the ownership of who owns the rights to King Kong was always up in the air. Like, I think the guy who wrote the book sued Toho and Radio uh, Radio Tower Studios over the rights and won. Or like, wow. they're a bunch of, bunch of le- legal mumbo jumbo. So for the longest time, the only widely available one was the U.S. edited version. Oh, interesting. Which is a shame because it's, oh <laughs> boy, it was so hard. <laughs> So I have, uh, I have thorough notes. I have how many pages of notes? One, two. I thought I had way more. Yeah, I have like three, three pages of notes of Amazing. this movie. But here's here's the basic synopsis. There's a medical firm in Japan that's found these super awesome berries that uh, are non-indictive but have LSD properties to them. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and so the medical firm's like, "Oh, we want to use, we want to use these for medicine." But he's talking to a television producer about this, and the television producer was like, "That sounds great. Oh, we can give you so much airtime. We can, we can really like boost your publicity." So he sends two of his like random like underlings to go into the jungles of the South Pacific to find these LSD berries. Okay. And at the same, and also the two people he sends. I shit you mm-hmm. not, all called Sakurai and Vegeta. <laughs> Fucking Vegeta's in this movie. <laughs> Sakurai too. <laughs> yeah. Cross Confirms uh, Vegeta and Smash. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and like, apparently Sakurai has this magic thread that like is super thin, but like can hold anyone's weight, which is important. I want you guys to remember that because that will come up later in the movie only one time. <laughs> um, Super important plot item that happened yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just say this now, throughout the movie, whenever the movie gets a certain rhythm or momentum, they do a hard cut to like some UN person talking and explaining to us dumb audience. Oh my God. So, so you're like once like, you're like, like you're getting like into the movie, right? And then all of a and sudden then... it cuts to this like post-edited thing that's just like, yeah. this is what's happening in the movie. For those who are not <laughs> aware, Let's cut to this other scene. Um, oh, no. And so they just, like, I call, in my notes, I call him the white man. Because it's literally the most fucking Caucasian white man in this oh. Japanese monster movie. We cut to, like, I think it was either the Americans or the Russians. They somehow didn't notice there was a glacier in front of them, so they crash into a glacier. And wake up Godzilla, because apparently he was in the glacier. <laughs> and it's hilarious, because before, like, as the shot, how the shot cuts composition, this glacier is like glowing green from the inside, but they're underwater and they can't see what the fuck is around them, so they crash into it. And that wakes up Godzilla. Hard cut to the UN people being like, hey, uh, back to our friends in the South Pacific. Also, this whole time that like, so in the original are... film, the non edited American edited film, those UN people don't happen. Yeah, there's basically the UN people are purely an American edit. Because the original one had a stronger focus on the TV producer and Sakurai and Vegeta. But they cut out a lot of scenes of them to insert the UN people talking about what the hell's going on in the movie. So it's just, a, it's a different movie then at this point. Like, it's not even the yeah. same movie that the, the Japanese people saw. I mean, it is. It The plots are the same. It's just certain scenes where we have the comedic relief of the, you know, Sakurai and Vegeta are cut. And it's just focusing on white people in a room explaining to us dumb audience. And I think at this point, so yeah, everyone on the sub is like too so passive, like, oh, I guess we crashed into something. Oh no, the sub is on fire. I think we're dying. Ah! And they, they die. That's um, that yeah, that's hilarious. And then there's in the UN, there's also this scientist who has godlike uh, like knowledge of the mindset of Godzilla and King Kong. Like, he just knows what they plan are, they're going to do and know. Just, uh, he's a gut. He's like, it would make sense for Kong to do this. Oh, look at Kong's doing it. Very weird. 
Yeah, we when people talk to us, dumb audience. We cut to Godzilla fighting, and then emergency broadcast about uh, a helicopter crashing for some reason, and that's where Sakurai and Vegeta are in. But then when we see them, they're just chilling on a fucking boat, like going to the South Pacific. And this is where we get to brown face. So the studio had a, so they had to pay for the rights to use Kong, King Kong. Yeah. They didn't have enough money to actually hire South Pacific or Polynesian actors. Oh yeah. So what they did instead <laughs> was they got Asian, like Japanese people and just put like tan or like gave them a bronzer body paint yeah. all over themselves. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Oh. Oh, and it gets it gets better. It gets it better. better. Extremely <laughs> tough look. Extremely tough look. Mm -hmm. There's a super annoying interpreter called Toto, and he's like, he talks like this, and oh, guys, I think we need to give him a peace offering. Yeah. And they do give him peace offering of cigarettes. Cigarettes, I think. Yeah, just cigarettes. They went over <laughs> the chief by giving him a pack of cigarettes, and they start handing them out to everyone. And there's even a little kid that's oh like, hey, God. can I have a cigarette? And they're like, well, well we're not home. And they, they hand him a cigarette. What? It's terrible, <laughs> dude. Yeah. And as they're, you know, they finally made peace with the natives. A lightning bolt strikes. And then we get to the, again, another cult a greatly cultural sensitive scene of all the natives just dropping whatever they're doing, prostrating themselves and just bowing to the shrine that they have. And they like pick up the drums and they play their like, quote unquote, native music to calm the gods of the mountains. Oh my God. Yeah. This is a big yikes. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, this movie came out in the 60s. So not making excuses. I'm just telling you the, you know, the frame of time that this came out. Yeah. That's just a weird fact though, man. Yeah. Again. And then, so after that happens, again, we cut to the UN being like, hey, this is what's going on. Back to you. And then also throughout the whole time, this whole time, there's like really bad blue screen effects whenever there are like people interacting with like Godzilla or Kong, there's like really bad effects. But at this point we have not seen Kong. So sorry for, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Oh, there's a, so uh, nothing happens for a while. Like they're just, you know, they're traveling through the jungles. Vegeta's a little bitch and gets scared from a lizard jumping on his shoulder. And they literally like, he throws it to the ground and they just shoot the shit out of the lizard. Oh my God. Um, but it was, then it was like a nothing scene and that's what happens. Um, later that night though, actually, because of all the thrashing around, I think Vegeta falls down a cliff and eats shit. And so they have to give, they have to go back to the village for him to drink the LSD berries for him to heal. And when that's happening, a giant octopus just shows up and tries like destroying the warehouse where they have all the berry juice. Okay. And it just so happens that there's a little kid and girl in there too. Um, and this is where we first get our first appearance of Kong and give you reference on how this Kong looks. I will put an image on the screen. This is what <laughs> the, 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 the Kong oh. costume looks like. Definitely not someone in a suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a so we see <laughs> this thing fight an octopus, which the interesting thing about the octopus is an actual live octopus. Wow. So it's Wait, fighting a real really? octopus. I mean, octopus wrestling was a thing. I don't know if you guys knew about that. Like, Wait, really? Note. Octopus wrestling was a thing back in like the, oh, I don't remember the time frame. I think it might've been the time frame around here where you would get someone in a diver suit, which, you know, is pretty heavy on its own. Wait, and diver would, or diver? Diver, diver suit. <laughs> They'd go under the water and they would try to wrestle an octopus up back to the surface. And it was like a, an actual like huge thing in the Pacific what? Northwest. What if? And um, they, they actually got outlawed because <laughs> of how like yeah. they were killing the octopus. Fuckers would probably yeah. die. Yeah. But so the octopus they use are more was not like a, a Pacific giant octopus. It was a small one. And there's even notes that the producers like after they're done filming ate a couple. <laughs> and here's the thing. So Kong just beats beats the giant octopus like super easy. But then he starts going for the like berry juice and just like and to him, they're like shot glass size to Kong. Oh. And he just like hammers like four shots back oh. and then lays down. Oh my goodness. And then out of nowhere, the native, the, the quote unquote native people start playing their music and start dancing to calm him down, to put him to sleep. <laughs> So they like live with Kong, so they're aware of yeah, his tendencies. Yeah, because Kong is their god. 
What the heck, dude? Uh, yeah, and there's so much shoulder movement in the dance, it's, it's ridiculous. Seems like uh, one hell of an experience. Oh. So then after that, hard cut again to the U our favorite UN people. Interesting thing. So they have the the white UN guy that we've seen at the beginning of the movie or throughout mm -hmm. the movie. And they bring in this like professor guy. And in reality, the guy who's playing the professor, UN professor, was the head of the Smithsonian Museum of History. Cool. So he just comes in and drops like a bunch of like dino knowledge. And, but the funniest thing out of this scene is that he's showing him like, see this marble? This is Godzilla's brain. And like, it's tiny. So if these things, these two monsters were to fight, it'd be a fight of intelligence. So he's saying stuff like that. While the guy we've been seeing throughout the whole movie, straight up I fucks this marble. He just like up this marble's ass. Again, I fucking the hell out of it. That's and be like, weird. really? This is, this is Godzilla's brain. Huh. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And then after that, the movie kind of gets like all over the place because they're we're constantly. I think it would also again because of the the cut in UN scenes. It's like really all like again all over the place. There's like scenes of Vegeta and Sakurai because Gong and Kong is on an LSD trip. They put him on a raft and they start sailing back to Japan. At the same time, Godzilla is attacking Japan. So the Japanese Navy inter intersects with, I don't think intersects the right word, but meets up with Kong's ship and says, yo, we're not, we don't want to deal with two kaiju at the same time. Understandable. Turn around, send them back. Understandable. But of course, Kong wakes up and they're like, oh shit, he's awake. Like, we got to kill him. Because on the raft, there's TNT on all, like, all the corners. So if he got out of hand, they just blow him to Kingdom Come. Which they have to, but it doesn't affect Kong. And he just swims to Japan. What? Yeah. And Vegeta's... So Vegeta has a girlfriend in this movie who we never get the name of. But I like to call her Bulma. <laughs> so Bulma is a fucking idiot because she goes onto the train that Godzilla is attacking. Okay. Of course, she gets, and the train goes into like the mountains and stuff like that. And that's where Godzilla attacks the train. And they like start running away and stuff like that. And then, because again, there's a lot of editing back and forth between the military, the UN, our characters, back to the UN, or back to their characters. Back, It's jumping all over the place. Yeah. Even to the point where in my notes, I get confused that it actually wasn't Bulma who was on the train, it was Sakurai's girlfriend who is on the uh, train okay. and uh, yeah, but again, a lot of nothing happens. But finally, 55 minutes into the movie, King Kong finally meets up with Godzilla. After 55 Jeez. minutes, this is yeah, the whole movie. An, after the whole an movie. hour and a half movie. So after the whole movie. <laughs> no, 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 they, I mean, it's not a, really a fight. Basically, Godzilla nukes Kong with fire and he's really hurt and walks away. But we only get like five minutes of that until we cut back to the fucking UN people again. So my Kong oh. fight got interrupted by the stupid white UN people. This is terrible, dude. Yeah, and this is where the UN stuff starts getting really egregious because they straight up just dub over like these Japanese military people talking about a plan. So we're like watching video of like them at a round table talking about military strategies, but we have the same white UN guy telling us what they're saying rather than having them say it. And it's just what? like, oh, yeah. So it'll be like, they're talking, but then they have a voiceover of okay. someone saying something vaguely the same. So <laughs> weird, what the heck? Yeah, and I, here's the part, like, I'll I'll start uh, going faster because at this point, like, I think my notes start getting more, a little more slapdash. But I will, one thing that was brought up is that um, they think that, oh, we can't hand, like, we can't deal with having Kong and Godzilla, and they're in Tokyo, you know, rough, I think it's, don't quote me on this, but I think it's roughly the capital like of Japan is like the Tokyo province. And they're like, maybe to get rid of them, we drop a nuclear bomb on it. Yeah, that might be something we have to do, but let's hope it doesn't get there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, of course, the Japanese would love to bomb themselves. 
Um, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's not the right course of action there. Yeah, I'm just like, what? You're so fucking tone deaf. Yeah, like the, the fact that's even on the table, I think is ridiculous. But again, they Kong's attacking Tokyo. This is where the magic wire comes back into play because they knock Kong out again with Ellis Tree mushrooms and they, with loudspeakers, play the natives' drum music again, which knocks out Kong. Mm-hmm. And those invincible wires, they tie Kong up with them and tie them to balloons. What? So the way they transport Kong what? is they basically take a page out of Up and float Kong towards Godzilla. What? Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I shit you not. Let's see. Is there it's not how that works? I want to see if That's I have an image physics. reference to this. That's not physics. Yeah, no, but they're like giant helium balloons, so don't even worry, dude. Yeah, it makes sense. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, Google image yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried. I'll show you else the time. But yeah, so oh, also um, I failed to mention because there's, a, again, there's like three plans that happen before this about either destroying Godzilla or destroying Kong that don't work. But in the process, we find out that Kong gets stronger when he is electrocuted. Oh. And Wait, to what? illustrate, you yeah, so when God, yeah, so when Kong, they actually show a scene of this because they make like electrical fence to kill Godzilla, but they're like, it won't work on Kong. And to show this, they show the ugly ass Kong costume chewing on the power cords. Oh my no. Getting stronger, like electricity what? pulsing through him. So electricity makes Kong stronger. Totally. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, they get to the base of Mount Fuji, and this is the final climactic 15-minute fight. Probably at this time, more like 10 or 5-minute fight, but like the climactic fight, the reason why you would watch this movie is to see Kong versus Godzilla. And it gets cut off by white UN people. No, this this time (laughs) it doesn't. Thank God it doesn't, but it's still the goofiest fight because they're like showing, oh, Kong is so underpowered. He's like, if only there was electricity in the air. Oh, it's a thunderstorm! Isn't oh my! that convenient? <laughs> and he gets electrocuted by a bolt of lightning. But before he... D- so they're showing him he's like down and out. And he's not powered up yet. And he throws a rock. And in the process of throwing the rock, he th- goes like... He flips himself and starts rolling down the mountain and slams into a bed of rocks. So he... Uh, make sure I'm clear. He throws, falls into the throw and starts rolling down the hill. What the heck? into a bed of rocks, knocking his ass out. What in the world? <laughs> then of course he gets hit by lightning and then starts doing lightning punches to God- Godzilla. And there's a great scene. I actually hope I can actually show you guys it. Cause it's just a piece of resistance when it comes to the Godzilla versus Kong fight. Uh, Kong grabs a tree and shoves it down Godzilla's throat. I think I've seen that scene. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> It is hard, hard, like, just, like, gagging him with the fucking tree. <laughs> and then they keep fighting, keep fighting until they get to the ocean. And I did a little research, and I, the base of Mount Fuji is, like, a couple, I want to say, between 10 to 20 miles away from the coast. Okay. But they're giant kaiju, so I'll, like, I'll, I'll believe it. Okay, they're fine. Yeah, that's to only coast. a couple steps. Yeah, that's walking by. <laughs> yeah. And they fight, and they destroy a pagoda. And then they both fall into the water. Classic. That's that's its staple. You got to destroy the pagoda. Yeah. They fall into the pagoda and you see Kong get out of the water and swim back to his island. But you don't see Godzilla. And that's the movie ends. Wait, really? Yeah. And the movie just ends there. <laughs> what? That's anticlimactic. Oh, it, it sure is. And because, so oh. the way I just explained the ending, they both fall over a cliff. But we only see Kong come out of the water and swim. But in the dubbing, they say, oh, there's no visual on Godzilla. That's all they say. And because of that, for the longest time, or even to this day, people say Kong won the fight. He beat Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. And that room was even stretched to, there was two different cuts. I mean, there were, but there was two different endings. For the Japanese audience, Godzilla won. For the American audience, Kong won. Mm-hmm. But in reality, no one won. Everyone it's a stupid lost. movie. It's terrible. Everyone lost <laughs> money. Well, the no, real, it, the real losers were the audience. The audience. Yes, <laughs> but it's funny that you say that because it financially was the biggest to this day, the most watched Godzilla film. What? Really? Yeah. Um, I, oh, I wish even I more than the like the modern ones. Yeah, because I they did the math of ticket sales, 
and they're like, well, barring repeat watches, 10% of the population of Japan saw this movie. Oh my God. That's, that's a like large the, number. That's the Wikizilla Kong versus Godzilla movie uh, video. I'm actually going to pull it up real quick. But uh, yeah, my final thoughts about the movie was, why did everyone hype this up? This is kind of shitty. <laughs> <laughs> like I, this is fucking, this is lame. The UN parts are lame. But then I realized, I again, I went back to more research after I watched it and realized, oh wait, on the bonus disc of the Criterion Collection is the Japanese cut. Oh. So I'm like, I watched it for no reason. Fuck. You had the original the whole time. Yeah, but at that point, I'm wow. like, I, I don't want to watch it again. I'll, I'll, I'll be fine through one sitting. <laughs> You're missing out, dude. Uh, it could be the best movie you've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's, the, it's but the thing is, yeah, but the thing is, though, the American one's the one that everyone has watched. It's the most widely available one. Yeah. So that was the one that people were like, "This is why this like this is movie is so cool. This movie is so fun." It's like, really? Like, really? So yeah, I was I was thoroughly disappointed, but I also believe it was overhyped for me. Sorry, I'm looking at the information. So how? What do you guys think? Well, uh, I'm glad I only had to listen to you instead of watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you sounds like a real bad movie. Oh, man. Sounds like a movie of real crappy levels, man. That doesn't, that doesn't... Well, I mean, again, if you want to know more information, look up this, the story of Kong versus Godzilla, wikizilla.org. Okay. Because uh, they do a way more in-depth. Okay. They had, but yeah, it looks like it was 11 million. It looked like 11.2 million. 11.2 million admission tickets. Damn. It's a lot of yeah, people. A lot. So yeah, that was the movie. I know it's been a lot of me talking. Uh, so do you guys, and we're, it's, it's actually been a lot of time. Yeah, um, it's been like well, a good amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> but I'm curious, I want to open the floor up for questions for you guys. Like, is there anything that after, you know, after all my talking, is there anything that you, that you have any questions on or want to ask me? I think. I mean, the Godzilla history and, you know, cinema universe seems extremely vast. It's very interesting. Like, it's it's very, like I, like, I want to watch these movies for some reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'll say this. Again, I have all the first 15 films that they produce. I own on Blu-ray with the Criterion Collection. And then I own a major. I own, I don't own too many, but I own Space Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroya, and then I own like a hodgepodge, but I know I, I know where to get my Godzilla. <laughs> Um, know, Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla but I'll end it. I'll end my uh, my lesson on this. Avoid the Godzilla anime like the fucking plague. Okay. It is. It's horrible, isn't it? Uh, I I personally loathe it, but I, I'm not gonna. I mean, some people might like it, and it has you know some elements are good, but it's trash. <laughs> and I'm sorry you like trash. <laughs> That'll be the lesson for today. Viewers, have a good day. Uh, do you guys want to sign off? Thanks so much for listening. Learned a lot. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome.